shot. The latest coming up. A mistrial and a murder case. The details we are set to receive about this decision still ahead. Live from case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. Good afternoon. The White House says about 900,000 children ages 5 to 11 have now received their first dose of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine since U.S. regulators cleared those shots. There are now clinics open here in San Antonio where your children can get their shot. And right now, Max Massey is joining us live from the mass vaccination at the Alamo Dome. That's right. Hello, guys. Yes, yeah, so this is just about ready to get underway. Take a look behind me. The clipboards are out. The volunteers are getting ready, set to start at noon. So we're just a few moments away. But we've been here all morning long. Take a look right behind us. Dozens and dozens of vehicles. We have parents, grandparents, lots of kids in the back seats ready to get their first shot. We've also talked to a few people who just want to get their booster shot. So they're offering both here and it is so quick and easy and efficient. It's really down to a science here. They've had months and months of prep. Essentially, it's a vaccine drive through for you and your family. It's right here in lot B of the Alamodone, right off of Cherry. All you have to do, drive up, fill out a couple papers. You don't even need proof of insurance. You don't need an ID. You just need to fill out papers indicating that you are the guardian of the child that you are driving here. You follow the signs, you get the shot, and then you are on your way. Now, this whole purpose of having this mass vaccination station, get as many kids in and around our area vaccinated, help stop the spread of COVID and help make sure this holiday season is as safe as possible. There are about 332,000 eligible children or 16.7% of the population who can get vaccinated. Uh, so once we see that that age group get vaccinated, we're going to see our vaccination numbers definitely shoot up because already 77% of uh, individuals 12 and older have been fully vaccinated. 90% have received at least one dose. That is Alamo Dome drive through clinic open from noon to 8 p.m. Wednesday through Friday. And again, guys, as you just saw, dozens and dozens of people ready to get their shot. There's also an incentive, a hundred dollar HEB gift card. So they are set to get underway in the next few moments. We're going to check back in with you at 1230. Talk about the incentive Ed. hear from some of the parents who were first in the line this morning. Guys, back to you. All right, Max, thank you very much. Pfizer officially asking the FDA to expand emergency youth authorization for its booster shot to include adults 18 years and older. As ABC's Rita Roy reports, that request comes as the nation records a slight uptick in daily coronavirus case numbers. This morning, Pfizer asking the FDA to expand authorization for its booster shot for all Americans 18 and over. The drug maker is pointing to new data showing a third shot increases protection against symptomatic disease to 95% across all age groups. The request is coming just months after a public debate over boosters for all Americans when an FDA advisory committee voted down a similar request. Dr. Chatterjee voted no, Dr. Perlman voted no, Dr. Gans voted no. But new information suggests the outcome this time could be different. Sources familiar with the discussions now confirming to ABC News that the FDA will not be calling its independent committee to review Pfizer's data, which would mean authorization could happen before Thanksgiving. It will be very likely that everyone will be able to get a booster within a reasonable period of time. The news comes as the country sees an uptick in COVID cases. The new daily average sits at 71,000 cases a day, up almost 13% in the last two weeks, with 21 states seeing an uptick in cases by at least 10%. The common denominator, nearly all of the states are also transitioning to colder weather, forcing people indoors. One of those states, Colorado, where just 5% of ICU beds remain available statewide. The surge so severe, the state has reactivated its crisis standards of care to better staff hospitals. We are going into uh, this surge with fewer people and everyone is tired. Our hospitals and ICUs are filling up with patients who are going on ventilators and many of them dying. We have an update this noon on a shooting investigation. That shooting happening on the west side, and police say the victims were able to identify the suspect involved. 
Officers tell us they were called to the 500 block of North General McMullen just after 11 last night. That's between West Commerce and Castorville Road. Police say the suspect shot the two victims and left them in the entry to an apartment complex. It's not clear what happened before the shooting. However, after bullets started flying, police say the suspect took off. The 17 and 18 year old victims were taken to the hospital, one of them with life threatening injuries. And at last check, the other victim's condition had stabilized. Later on today, we're going to learn more details about a judge's decision to declare a mistrial in a capital murder case. That mistrial was declared yesterday in R.C. Curtis's murder trial. He ended up in court after police accused him of killing Paula Boyd in 2015. We're going to hear more about the mistrial decision today and whether this case will be dismissed or retried. We're going to have the latest coming up tonight at 5 and 6. It was an early start for San Antonio Fire Department battling the flames at an apartment complex on the city's south side. We know at least one family is now displaced from their home. It happened on South Flores near East South Cross Boulevard. Jonathan Colto has the details for us. It was 3.30 this morning when the San Antonio Fire Department arrived to this active fire on the 5900 block of South Flores and East Gerald. The first units on scene reported a, a uh, four quadruplex apartment complex with a big garage in the back of it with heavy fire showing through the roof. The fire damaging several apartments, they say that garage was being used for storage. Fire extended into the apartments from the garage. At this time, we're just trying to get all the fire out of the attic. When firefighters arrived, they say the walls of this garage started to collapse while they were tackling the flames, but say they were able to quickly gain control of the fire. Now, just a few feet away on the opposite end of this building, only one apartment with people inside. The family displaced from this apartment say they're just happy to be okay. The dog was barking and then we heard, um, I heard something and then I smelled something and then we ran out. And I, that's when I saw the, the flames. Nicole Garcia was asleep when the fire broke out. She says if it weren't for the dog barking, the outcome this morning would have been a tragic one. We would have burned. Yeah, for sure. Fire crews are estimating eighty-five dollars to $90,000 in damages. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Certainly a close call there. Brooks now connecting directly to the San Antonio River thanks to a partnership with the Bear County and San Antonio River Authority. This morning, the city of Brooks celebrating the completion of a $2 million project. It connects the Green Line Park in Brooks to the Mission Reach and to the Riverwalk. Leaders say connecting the Green Line Park to downtown will give Southside residents more opportunities to enjoy San Antonio's attractions and will help create a healthier community. So you can start at the Green Line, which is about a mile and a half of trail, and then connect to the San Antonio River Mission Reach up 15 plus miles. And so you can walk your dog, push a stroller, um, come out with your, your buddies in your running club. And so it's really awesome to be able to experience uh, the Mission Reach along the river walk. Looks beautiful. The new extension is nearly a quarter mile at approximately 1,200 feet. We've updated our weekend forecast and temperatures may be a little bit cooler. We'll talk about it coming up. Also coming up, a solid debut for the new head basketball coach at Texas Tech. Larry Ramirez with the highlights. Ready? Stand back. Whoa, mama. <laughs> Here, and you can do it again. <laughs> Add more. And more food covering. Oh, nice. Turned out yellow. Yeah. Oh, I guess that was yellow. Right. You want more? Okay, David. Let's do it. David, you do yours. You mind? Everyone gets to pour their own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoa. Yeah, there's a red. Yes. <laughs> How about that, huh? Good job. That looks, like actual that, looks yeah. that does look good, doesn't it? Almost look looks like that. liquid. All right, I want to do it now. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, we've got one right, vinegar here. there. Oh yeah, put your goggles on for sure. So this morning we took Katie's Science Lab on the road. We're at Carvajal Elementary with a class full of fifth graders making volcanoes erupt. 
You can watch the Katie. You can watch Katie and David create the project with the kids. It's on KSAT.com. We have a list of the ingredients you need to make your own erupting volcano. I, you know, David with chemicals. I don't know. It was uh, it was a blast for those. I'm gonna tell you, fifth graders or something else to hang out with. There, that was smart kids there. in yeah. that classroom, and they created some good volcanoes. Looked like a lot of fun. It was. It was I like all the different happened. colors, and that's the closest I want to get to a volcano. I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, what I can tell you is we got a front coming through tomorrow, guys. So that's going to bring temperatures down a little bit by the end of the week. We got another one for the weekend. Good looking forecast ahead. The aquifer is actually up a tenth of a foot today to 666.9. And your pollen counts just molds. They're in the low category. We've had a good stretch as far as pollen count is concerned. We'll take a look at a couple of those fronts and let you know what that means for our rain chances too. Coming up. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Roblox shares skyrocketing Tuesday, closing up 42%. That following a strong earnings report for the third quarter. The video game company reported strong growth within the platform over the last few months as daily active users rose 43% from the same period a year ago last month. Bookings, where revenue stems from, grew by 28%. Meanwhile, Tesla continues its major sell-off after CEO Elon Musk asked his Twitter followers if they support him selling a portion of his Tesla stock worth $21 billion. Tesla lost at least 60 billion off its market value after Musk's Twitter poll. Current and past board members, including Musk's brother, Kimball Musk, selling off hundreds of millions of dollars worth of their shares just in the last week and a half. And DoorDash announced during their third quarter earnings report that they'll acquire international food delivery platform Wolf for $8.1 billion. The Finland-based company will run DoorDash International, that in a move to spearhead efforts for overseas expansion. Now in their earnings news, DoorDash did bring in more revenue than expected, raking in $1.28 billion in the last quarter, but lost more in earnings per share than anticipated at $0.30 cents a share. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Getting deeper into November and going to get chillier. Is that what he said? Yeah, meantime, it's uh, short sleeve weather. Yeah, pretty much. Today's going to be our warmest day, though, in the seven day forecast. So I can tell you that. And our front that we're expecting tomorrow morning will be probably before sunrise. I hesitated on calling it noticeable. I mean, this is actually probably a weak front, but I'll call it noticeable because we'll get a lot drier air with it. We'll go from highs in the 70s and lows in the 60s because it's been kind of muggy down to highs in the 70s and lows in the 40s because we'll get some dry air in here. That'll be the change tomorrow. So basically this front and the next one that we see on Friday will just have an effect on our morning lows. Now, Saturday will be a little cooler, but you'll notice the mornings dropping down into the 40s. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We'll have some good, crisp November mornings coming up over the weekend. Here's a look at the time lapse. That moisture increase, well, it brought some low clouds this morning. Now we're starting to see those break up. The sun's beginning to pop out. We're up to 75 now here in San Antonio. Southerly winds at 17 miles per hour. Dew point is at 64. So that number's pretty high. It's a little muggy today, and that is so why we are seeing some of these clouds. You can see that uh, they are starting to scatter out just a little bit more. 79 Castroville, it's up to 82 now in Pleasanton. Uh, 77 Randolph, 78 New Braunfels. Underneath the clouds where they're a little thicker, 66 in Rock Springs, that's a cool spot. But you go south where the sun is, 83 right now in Catula. Dew point tracker, and I mentioned really it's, it's the dew points, the humidity that will be affected by these fronts. So initially we'll get dew points in the 50s tomorrow and Friday and then that secondary surge of drier air comes in and the dew points really fall off over the weekend and make for some great weather both Saturday and Sunday. Here's the big picture and you can see where the clouds are, the morning low clouds. There are some rain showers as you get up into parts of Oklahoma, although those are pretty light. There's a frontal boundary there. Notice the temperature difference though. There really isn't a temperature difference. It is more to do with dew points. So the air behind this front is drier. Dew point is 30 in Midland. Compare that to 58 San Angelo or 60 in Abilene. And that front will slowly make its way into our area as we get later into tonight and early tomorrow morning. So here's what the future cast looks like. 5 o'clock today, I think we're looking at mostly sunny skies. Pretty nice day, just a little bit warm. By, say, 4 or 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, our front is getting closer, moving through San Antonio. With it, there could be a couple of showers, maybe a storm with it. 
but that's all going to be east and northeast of San Antonio, I think. So we are not looking for any rain here. At least rain chances are very, very low. By tomorrow morning, the front will have pushed through much of our area, and then we're seeing the dry air and clearing conditions on your Thursday. Forecast for today. If it comes up, there it goes. Computer's been slow today. I don't know what's going on. 79 degrees for a high. 71 by 8 o'clock, 68, 10 p.m., and then there's just a 10% chance of rain overnight. Veterans Day tomorrow, all looks good. Uh, will be a little bit breezy, I'll tell you that, but 61 at 8 o'clock, 70 noontime, 74 at 4 p.m. for any ceremonies that are going on. Looks like a really nice day. Forecasts uh, for Friday, 74. There's that secondary front. And I mentioned the weekend looks a little cooler now. We're going with 68 now on Saturday, 73 on Sunday. Morning lows in the 40s, as we pointed out. And then next week, we jump right back into the 70s. But, man, we've had a stretch of great weather here. Not a lot of rain in the forecast. So that's not all that good. But the temperatures have been fantastic. Very pleasant. Thank you, Justin. You know, it's no secret the Spurgers have been struggling to start the season. But mm -hmm. when you look at the standings, they're not really that far out of a playoff spot. But they need to get some wins. You know, if they make a solid run here at any point, yeah. they'll be right back up into the playoff spots or even into the play-in seedings there at the very bottom of it. So coming up, yes, the Spurs are struggling this season in part because they're just having a tough time closing out games. Well, Keldon Johnson isn't too worried about it. Plus, in men's college basketball, Chris Beard made his Texas Longhorns debut last night. Coming up. It is game day for the Spurs, who are home tonight to host the Sacramento Kings. San Antonio is 1-3 at the AT&T Center this season, while the Kings are 3-2 on the road. Now, the young Spurs are 2-3 in the last five games. Their record could be much better, but isn't because they haven't been able to close out games. That's where veteran guys like DeMar DeRozan and Rudy Gay would come in handy. But Keldon Johnson knows the Spurs will get better at finishing off teams and turn their season around. I mean, we're right there, but I think we just got to keep uh, making steps in the right direction. I feel like it'll, it'll come, but uh, I think, you know, as you can see, we're, we've been in every game except for one game, and that was Indiana. And uh, we just shot ourselves in the foot in, in all those games. So I think uh, just making making little adjustments and, and, and getting used to being in those moments, and I think we'll be fine. Five and six Kings will play at the three and seven Spurs tonight, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Yaka Pirtle's out again due to health and safety protocols. Jazz hosting the Hawks in Salt Lake City last night. And look at Wagner High School great Jordan Clarkson working over Danilo Gallinari in the lane for two of his 16 points off the bench. Clarkson showing off his handles, then his ability to spin and score with his right hand. Beautiful on Utah's bench. Well, let's just say they were impressed. Clarkson also showed off his three-point skills, making four of nine from beyond the argument. Six for 12 overall from the floor. The reigning sixth year of the man is off to a great start. The Jazz win 110-98. Atlanta was held to just two baskets during the final six and a half minutes. In men's college basketball, Texas Tech beat North Florida 89-74 last night in the season opener for both teams. Mark Adams won his coaching debut with his alma mater, Texas Tech. Transfer Kevin O'Banner scored 17 points for the Red Raiders, hitting back-to-back -back three pointers in the first half for Tech. He went three for five from downtown. Fellow transfer Bryson Williams led the Red Raiders with a game high 22 points, making nine of 11 shots. At halftime, John Harris with ESPN sat down with new Red Raiders football head coach Joey McGuire to talk about taking over the program. What's top priority for you now? Uh, you know, start out with the team, getting to know them one-on-one -on -one time and, and really building a genuine relationship. That's, you know, that's what I'm all about, and I can't wait to meet each kid. You know, I think the biggest thing is getting them to understand, you know, I think we have to recruit them, especially in this day and age. There's going to be different people that are going to try to come after them with a the transfer portal, and we don't want them to leave. We want them to be Red Raiders and help us win a lot of football games. So that got, I, they got to understand where I'm coming from, that I truly care about them, and I think they'll understand whenever they meet the coaches uh, also that, that that's what we're all about. And up in Austin, Chris Beard won his Texas Longhorns debut, 92-48. Courtney Ramey led the Horns with 14 points, one of six Horns in double figures. Transfers Marcus Carr and Timmy Allen had solid games for UT. Number five, Texas is 1-0 and will face a stiff test Saturday at number one, Gonzaga. The Bulldogs won their season opener, 97-63, last night against Dixie State. And there you go, Sears. Good run for Texas Tech right there. Thank a twofer. A twofer. We Men's like basketball. Men's football. Men's football. Just like that new head coach they got, too. Yeah.
Yeah. Uh, he seems to be a pretty popular choice. He's, he's, he's a Texas guy. Yep. He knows how it works in this state. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Appreciate that. He's all geeked. I love it. <laughs> Coming up in the next half hour, we're hearing from loved ones bringing children to the Alamo Dome to get the vaccine. Max Massey is live with the latest. New today at five, most of us get carried away when sprinkling spices on our food. Take it from a Cajun, less is more. After all, it's what adds the flavor and the kick, but it also comes with another kick. 12 in your size, Marilyn Moritz tells us why sprinkling too many spices can lead to some health con concerns. She's gonna tell us what to do to stay on the safe side today at five after entertainment tonight. The Alamo Dome mass vaccination site now up and running for COVID shots for children ages five to 11. And you can get a booster shot there too. Dozens and dozens of vehicles lined up throughout the morning to get those shots. Max Massey now joining us live from the Alamo Dome. So Max, for anyone who doesn't understand it or is not real sure how it all works, explain it to us. Yeah, guys, so it really is a one-stop shot for all the Pfizer shots, whether it's a booster, whether it's a regular COVID shot, or whether it's a shot for those 5 to 11 years old. And it is so easy, so efficient. Metro Health really has it down to a science. You show up to Lot B right off of Cherry Street, and you take a look in the distance, you'll see li cars lined up. A few dozen have been here since about 1145. You follow the signs. They really just got underway, giving out the shots a few moments ago. Quick, easy, efficient. Like you said, pull right up with well, the first thing you do is you go to that canopy. You have to fill out registration, but you don't need to make an appointment. You don't need to show ID. You don't even need to show proof of insurance. You just need to sign paper saying that if you do have a five to 11 year old in the vehicle to get their shot, that you are their registered guardian. And guys, we talked to some of the first people in line right there. The ones waving to us here with they had to say why it's so important that they get their shots. Now, why is it so important that uh, that they get their shots? So they won't get uh, infected with the COVID, that's why. But like we were saying, it is not just people bringing their children, their grandchildren to get the COVID shot. It is also people getting booster shots as well. A few people we spoke with actually said that the HEB gift card, a huge incentive for them to be the first ones in line. Remember, if you get your child vaccinated and they get both shots, they are eligible for a $100 HEB gift card per child. I just spoke with Metro Health. They said that they got 10,000 of the gift cards, so they have about 8,000 left. And so you're only gonna get it while supplies last. They do expect to have them for a while, but here you go, guys. Open noon to 8 p.m. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday here at the Alamo Dome. And like we said, no appointment needed. Back to you guys. Pretty good incentive there. Thank you. Now we have a major ruling, a federal judge rejecting former President Donald Trump's efforts to block the House investigation from gaining access to some of his White House records from the January 6th insurrection. Donald Trump suing to prevent the National Archives from turning the White House documents and records over to the January 6th committee. Trump invoking the doctrine of executive privilege that a president has a right to get confidential advice from his aides. But the judge rejected the claim that executive privilege applies in this case. The committee is hoping to get all call logs, emails, and notes to determine what was happening inside the White House on and shortly before January 6th. Lawsuits piling up less than a week after the deadly crowd crush at the Astor World concert in Houston. Legal experts say the risk is that mounting the juries could decide against rapper Travis Davis, Travis Scott, and the companies behind the event that killed eight people and left hundreds injured. More than 20 lawsuits have already been filed accusing organizers of failing to take simple crowd control steps or staff properly. Meanwhile, we're learning here and we're learning and hearing from one of the medics brought in the help during Astroworld. He describes an understaffed medical team thrust into an out of control crowd. I had so many people reach out to me, tug on my jacket, took, grab my shoulder and was like, please help me. I broke my foot. Please help me. I dislocated my shoulder. Please help me. I feel like I'm going to pass out. And I had to tell all of them. I will try to come back for you, but people are literally dead right now that I need to go help. The youngest injured victim from last Friday's event, nine years old. His family says he is still in a coma. 
This morning, Kyle Rittenhouse taking the stand during his homicide trial in Wisconsin. The 18 year old sworn in after the defense resumed its case inside the Kenosha courtroom. Rittenhouse broke down on the stand as he was being questioned about the night of the shooting. The judge had to call for a break after he became so emotional. Rittenhouse is explaining that he fired his rifle during the protest only while rioters were threatening his life and attacking him. Rittenhouse is accused of shooting and killing two people and hurting another back on August 25th of last year. Let's get outside with live cam. Not quite the fall feeling we were hoping for in the uh, middle of November, but things could change. It doesn't feel so fall like today. I do think we may actually climb into the 80s, just the way temperatures are looking right now with the sun coming out. It's going to be a warm day and it's somewhat humid too. We started off on the warm side with temperatures in the 60s this morning for morning lows. Far cry from sort of where we started the week. 64 was a little this morning here in San Antonio, 59 in Kerrville. So we were already off to that kind of warm start. And now a lot of places are starting to see those temperatures rise into the 70s and 80s. 60s basically to go around. And we had some of those morning clouds too. Those clouds starting to thin out some. And we already have below 80s showing up on the map from Divine down to Pleasanton here in San Antonio, mid to upper 70s. So it is entirely possible that we get into the 80s, even at the airport, a little bit later today. There are the headlines clearing skies. You'll see these clouds th that thin out a little bit more. And then by early tomorrow morning, we'll see a front move through. It doesn't do a whole lot for our forecast, other than it will be slightly cooler tomorrow, a little bit breezier, and the humidity goes away. Forecast for today, 79, although we may bump that to low 80s. As I mentioned, sunset around 541, 71 at 8 p.m. down to 68 at 10 p.m. And look for just a very small chance for shower or storm as that front comes through early tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about that front and a secondary front coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thanks, Justin. Halloween 2021, now just a memory, but it is never too late for a good ghost story. This one has to do with a living, breathing man named Ghost and the impression his artwork is having on the city of San Antonio. In this week's If These Walls Could Talk, Katrina Weber shows us how he went from a military member to a muralist. In Iraq, Afghanistan. While his name implies otherwise, the work of an artist known as Ghost is becoming more and more visible. It's on bars and buildings downtown. Not too long ago, though, the artist himself was in battle. You know, a lot of us guys, we come back and we we lost our sense of purpose. He had just wrapped up tours serving in Iraq and Afghanistan when in 2014 he left the army and turned to art. I was just having a lot of problems, having a lot of issues, just kind of reintegrating into regular society again. And uh, as sort of an outlet, I started painting. Murals were a natural progression for Ghost, who had been drawing and painting his whole life, even while in the military. Eventually, the two missions began to meet. No matter how public the artwork is, most artists will tell you it's still personal. For Ghost, that means including a piece of himself in every mural. All of his artwork includes some sort of nod to his military career. I try to put an homage to it as much as I can. He also puts his name on every piece, a label given to him by a friend who he once Boom, scared as it, a prank. Know, it's a, so it kind of rang the bell, you know, it dinged right there at that moment because we were looking for brand names. He says he's grateful he found both his name and his calling, making him one happy ghost. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Way to go, ghost. <laughs> Next time you order a slice of pizza, imagine it on wheels. Still ahead, how one man is making skateboards out of pizza slices. And the end of an era at Lanier, one step closer to retirement. Larry Mears with a closer look. A new law in Portugal would protect workers' me time. It makes it illegal for companies to contact them outside of office hours. Lawmakers just approved the new bill. Under the rule, companies are being told to respect workers' privacy and respect their time with their families. Violating the legislation would, quote, be a serious offense, end quote. And there's one guy who probably doesn't mind taking his work home with him. He has turned a popular fast food item into a dish that can really move you. 
As CNN's Jenny Moss explains, he takes pizza slices and turns them into skateboards. If two of your favorite things are skateboarding and pizza, wait till you see what a pizzeria owner in the Netherlands is dishing up. So I was like, pizza, skateboard, pizza skateboard. I have to make a pizza skateboard. It took him more than six months to perfect the process, but Salman Koshbari took that half-baked idea and made it work. He started with this pizza stool and then graduated. This is a tabletop with pepperoni in it. To tables and skateboards, the slice skateboards sell for around 800 bucks a piece. It takes about three weeks to make one. The pizza has to be degreased and dehydrated, covered with resin, sanded and polished. Sad to say... It's odorless. People are always asking for custom pizza skateboards. Can you make me a vegetarian pizza? But preserving that is even harder, so he sticks to margarita and pepperoni. Salmon, aka Flower Boy, considers them pieces of art, but they do function. Three times heavier than a regular skateboard. So it's not for everyday use, and no amount of elbow pads or napkins would help if a trick went wrong and a skater got impaled on a slice. For Flower Boy, this is a marriage of two loves. That's a morning. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a morning. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. That's a morning. I still don't get it. Guy's got a lot of time on his hands to come up with an idea like that, but you know, 800 bucks for a slice of pizza skateboard? I don't know, it just looked hard to ride. <laughs> it's free advertising. That's how you have to look at it. Okay. See, if people see them, oh, they ask them about it, and then boom. I got gotcha. you. It's advertising first pizza joint. Works out well. Uh, 76 degrees so far today. 64 was the low this morning. The averages are 73 and 52. So we were above average with that low temperature. Added moisture this morning. Records are 89 and 28 set back in 1995 and 19. 77. We do have some cooler weather on the way this weekend. Some highs potentially in the 60s. We'll look at that forecast coming up. Welcome back. I want to show you a chart here. We're going to look back on some rainfall events here around San Antonio. Climate Central put this together. It is sort of interesting as we look at the data. And these are this is measuring rain on the wettest days each year and what you'll notice is we get closer to where we are now we've had more big rain events of course we know 98 2002 2013 in general we've seen that trend kind of go up now the question is what does that mean well a warmer atmosphere holds more water and this is the key takeaway here more water increases the potential for flooding and more development more development means greater risk for flooding too which we've seen so all these things kind of coming together i think what we want to look at here is the fact that more flood events could be on the way and that's something we'll be monitoring closely certainly no flood events over the next week things are going to be actually pretty quiet as we look outside right now live cam shows partly cloudy skies 76 at the airport 80 at stinson 77 kelly 79 randolph and we've got a good breeze out of the south anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. Winds are going to be a little bit gusty during the afternoon. And as we look at the satellite picture, uh, we had thicker clouds earlier, now starting to scatter out some. 81 Castroville, 78 Hondo, 72 right now Bernie Stage, 78 in New Braunfels, 82 in Carrizo Springs, and skies are really clearing out west. You'll see numbers jump up there. We will see plenty of 80s on the map today. It's not feeling very fall-like. And I mentioned we bumped our temperatures up here in San Antonio to 81. As we go into tonight, though, Front comes through, that should lower our morning lows just a little bit tomorrow morning to 58. So you may want a white jacket as you head out the door. And then tomorrow afternoon, not as warm, it's not cold either, but mid 70s is what we're thinking for highs tomorrow and probably mostly sunny skies. Here's the setup as we look at the upper level winds. There is a dip in the jet stream here, but notice it doesn't come all the way down to South Texas. Most everything is still moving north of us, and that keeps a lot of the cold air, keeps a lot of the storm systems to our north. So we're not seeing big impacts here. This low pressure system will move east, and it will help to shove that front through, but it's not going to be a terribly strong front. You'll notice the temperatures behind the front are actually warmer than they are ahead of the front, and that's because 
with this front, it's mainly just a shot of drier air. Dew points are in the 20s and 30s behind it, 50s and 60s out ahead of it. And so we'll have that drier air moving into our area tomorrow. Here's what the future cast looks like. Quiet this afternoon and this evening, then around 4 or 5 o'clock, in the morning pre dawn that that front comes through. There could be a few showers and storms with it east of us, but chances here in San Antonio are very low. By 10 a.m. that front is pushing south through the area and we clear out that drier air will settle in tomorrow afternoon. Again, up around 81 degrees today. We dip into the 60s tonight, 68, 10 o'clock, and then we will put in some very small rain chances midnight to about 4 a.m to account for any showers that develop along that front. 74 tomorrow breezy. We start off in the 40s both Friday and Saturday morning. Another shot of drier air moves in Friday night, and that makes for a fantastic weekend. 68 Saturday, 73 Sunday, and then mid-70s to start next week. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. The UTSA Roadrunners finally getting that recognition they deserve in all these polls. Yeah. Now they got to keep it. I'll tell you what, the, this team has been very focused all year long. Really haven't suffered any type of a let down in any of the games and that's going to be key this coming Saturday when they host Southern Miss who has one win and eight losses compared to UTSA who is nine and oh plus we have some volleyball playoffs from last night coming up next. UTSA Roadrunners made their college football playoff debut at number 23 last night as they continue their fantastic season this Saturday in the Alamo Dome when they go for their 10th win in a row with 1-8 Southern Mississippi standing in their way. UTSA is ranked 15th in the latest Associated Press poll. Quarterback Frank Harris is now one of 20 semifinalists for the Davey O'Brien National Quarterback Award after throwing for more than 2,000 yards with 18 touchdowns and another four scores on the ground. Now, the trick is not to overlook the Golden Eagles, where the Roadrunners are favored by 33 points. And if you go watch the Alabama game, you can see how talented and how good they really are. Um, they've had injuries at quarterback, which always hurts, and um, injuries at some key positions on their team that's uh, not allowed them to get off to the start they want to as far as the wins and losses. Uh, but they've got a good football team. We approach them all the same. I mean, these guys, we really lock in, you know, I think, in my personal opinion, we even lock even in, you know, harder because we know, um, you know, sometimes you may, you may overlook an opponent, but uh, we don't. I mean, we approach them all the same. So uh, we're going to approach it just like they, the best team in the conference. It's a great way to look at it. Kickoff in the Dome this Saturday set for 2.30 p.m. And KSAT 12 Sports will be there. Now that the Lanier Vokes are co-district 13-5A Division I champs that are heading to the playoffs, head coach Don Gatton is closer to retirement. After 24 seasons at the West Side School, the pride of the West Side and more than 40 in coaching, Gatton has decided to hang up the whistle after this football season is complete. That's after he was able to lead Lanier to back-to-back -back district titles and into his 13th postseason. This Saturday, Lanier faces Southside in the Class 5A by district playoffs. I've had a good time here at Lanier and uh, my, my 28th year here and 24 is the year as the head coach. You know, it's for me, it's time to call it quits. You know, my son's coaching now. I, I could go watch his games and I could uh, go watch practices and I could critique, I could critique him. Oh, that's funny. High school volleyball playoffs last night. Class 6A third round. Brian Nice and Madison. The Mavericks down by five points in the third set, but come all the way back. Mia Dorsey comes up with a huge block. Madison wins the set 25-23. But Brandeis rolls in the fourth. Carly Ferris to Jalen Gibson for a shot to the far corner. Brandeis advances three sets to one. The Broncos will face the winner of this match. Harlan versus Warren at Northside Sports Gym. First set, Hawks Maddie Lee sets up Delia De Los Santos for an emphatic spike on set point. Harlan takes a three sets to none. More highlights from this match and from Antonian's second round match against Katie St. John on our website, ksat.com, right now. And in the NBA, the Kings will play at the Spurs tonight as start of a two game homestand for San Antonio. Jakob Pertl's out for health and safety protocols. Hopefully, he Coaches, players will keep them on the sidelines a few more weeks. Right. And make stretch this thing out. Coach. Yeah, you know, you, you know the Vokes want to make a deep oh, run for Coach. Uh, he's touched a lot of lives over there. Yep. Good Question, did you get any pie yesterday? I wasn't here yesterday. I'm sorry. Okay, did you get any pie? No. You didn't say any pie? 
Just checking, see if anybody got pie, because I know Mike Osterhage where, did. Where would the pie have come from? Hmm. Hmm, where did it I go? I don't know. Hey, look at this. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Mike Last place burger. This is going to be one of the first ones on your list you're going to want to try. And Mark Villarreal is here, and you smash these down, and you got a great tip, right? Yeah, it's the wax paper tip. That way it won't stick to your spatula. You put a little wax paper. Yeah. And then once you do the smash, press down as hard as you can. Really give it some wagyu beef, and boy, there is a reason why you smash that burger. And oh, if you could just smell here, you're not going to believe it. All right, Briscoe Western Art Museum is the place to be this weekend, and that's where Fiona is right now. Hey, Fiona, what's going on? Hey there, we're here in the McNuck Sculpture Garden here at the Briscoe Western Art Museum, and this is just one of the crafts that you can do this weekend at a free festival while they celebrate Native American Heritage Month. We're gonna have a preview at all the fun you and your kids can have coming up. All right, and our good friend Robert Trejo is here from Zoomagination, and who's your buddy? This is Milo. Okay. And Milo's a lesser crested cockatoo. And he likes to talk, or at least and say one thing, right? Talk. He likes to say hip hip hooray. He may not do, we'll ask him Perform to do. Hold on camera, Milo. Say hip hip hooray. Come on, Milo. You're on camera. Hip hip hooray. <laughs> Never work with kids and animals on live television. <laughs> Trust me, he said it beforehand. Of course, how we came out. We've got a lot of animals that we're going to show you. Also, peanut butter and jelly with a little bit of a Thanksgiving twist. That and a whole lot more is coming up on SA Live, so stick around. Milo, come on, man.